everybody. Just wanted to do a little, um, I forgot to tell you guys what I was making for the video. So I forgot to make a little quick intro. Um, we are fixing to make pasta. Um, I'm actually making lasagna noodles out of it, but you can actually use it and make um, all kinds of different pasta. Um, and at the very end, I'm putting a picture of um, what I used them in last night, the Mexican type lasagna stuff. So, hope y'all enjoy. Okay, so this is the KitchenAid. Um, you guys really won't be able to see down in it because it'll be too hard to pick my laptop up and turn it. It'll look kind of funky. Um, but you guys will be able to see all the steps as I do it. And then you'll be able to see as I put the pasta attachments and stuff on too. So, we're going to be, of course, using the KitchenAid. There are many ways you can do this. You could do the pasta by hand. Um, you, could do the, you could do pasta in if we processor. I choose to use the KitchenAid. Um, and even with the recipe that I'm doing, I don't know where it came from, um, but it's homemade noodles, all, noodles, all the KitchenAid. Um, it's a basic egg noodle recipe, and it is noted on the recipe. It is from the KitchenAid people. This is their recipe. Um, we're going to use egg noodles mainly because it's the only recipe I've got, and because... I like looking for another one, um, but I'm going to modify it some. Um, they tell you to use your flat beater, which we call the paddle attach. I call the paddle attachment. So we're going to use that. Um, but instead of pulling it out and actually kneading it by hand, I'm going to switch to the dough hook and let it do the kneading, <clears throat> mainly because it's just easier for me. So. Um, in the bowl of the mixer, we're going to add the eggs. Uh, let me get a bowl to chunk the <coughs> eggshells and stuff in. We need a trash bowl. Okay, trash bowl. Um, it calls for four large eggs. Um, there's one. There's two. And then we have to also add the one tablespoon of water, um, the flour, and the salt. So basically, we're putting everything in here at one time. So that makes our four eggs. So for the egg goo, that I'm going to drop out of the egg shell. Okay, so we've got the eggs. Um, I'm going to grab a tablespoon of water, which I typically do. Yay, I didn't spill it. Let me put there. We've got our water, three and a half cups of flour, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, as far as the salt goes, I don't ever use what it calls for because I'm not a big salt fan. Sorry, my hair's sticking up and I don't want to touch it with my bare hands because I am messing with pasta. Um, sorry about that, you funky, funky hairdo. Um, I feel like I got it stuck too much. So, okay. I've got my measuring cups attached to the wall over here. Um, just because I did just wash them, I think they were all dry, but just to be on the safe side, we are going to wipe them down to be on the safe side. Because I don't want to put water in my flour. Okay, there we go. Put that back in front of me. I knew me. So, um, let me grab the lid because I tend to spill flour and I don't want to do it. There's the half a cup. There's one. Half a cup. There's two. And now I don't measure this the way you're supposed to. We're supposed to scrape off the excess. Um, I just tend to make the last one a little bit shy of what it needs to be. Ooh, that one's way too hot. Okay, okay. one more scoop. See, so I tend to kind of do it like that, so I have that open hole at the top. I know I'm here. Um, I was debating if I just wanted to use the only the other one, but it's okay. Will somewhat follow the directions. So we are going to 
turn that on loose so we don't have a big mess start. Move the eggshells out of the way. We are going to let this mix some so that it mixes out well. I did note on this recipe that the last time I made it, I had to use five eggs instead of four. Um, so we're going to try the four. I discovered that where I live, I mean, that was where I live sometimes, it requires me to use more liquid and then sometimes it requires more flour. Um, or it's making a nasty sound. Um, Lock it in. Start up slow. I think I'm gonna grab her milk and put basil on her for a week. Just have one. And I'm gonna put some more in it. Um, I said about three cups, three fourths of a cup of water, but I don't plan to use it all. I'm just gonna pour it in a little bit at a time until I get a cohesive dough. Because it's now enough of a day, I'm gonna turn this up. And let it mix, although I think I have a little too much water. So I may have to add some flour. Um, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Um, it's coming up, but it's not like going down and getting the dough that's in the bottom. So I'm going to push this dough down so that it has to hit that bottom. Lock it back in. There we go. Now it's picking up stuff off the very bottom of the dough. So these are my um, attachments for pasta. Um, there are three different ones. And somewhere I've got a book for them. Um, I love the kitchen I do, I ask, but for some reason today it is it's just sticking to the side of the container. So we're going to just go ahead and take out this attachment. But either way, it still did better at the mixing than the flat one that it did, which is probably why I usually only use this one. I have found that I use this one for almost everything dough and bread related. Um, I have found for cake mixes and stuff, I typically tend to use this one out only. The only time I seem to pull, ever pull my whisk out, um, if I'm beating egg whites, that's about it. I've gotten to where this is my go-to. Um, I use it on icing and cake batters and everything like that. So, it is not too sticky. It's not bad. Um, this now gets to sit and rest for the 20 minutes. So we're gonna move the bowl to the side. We're fixing to put the attachment on here. So these are the pieces we have. Um, this one is your flat sheet roller. This is the only one we're gonna be using today because we are just making sheets. Um, I might use it as lasagna or I might do ravioli. Either way, I need sheets. Um, these are actually made in Italy. But this one would be the spaghetti one. And this one would be your one if you're making like angel hair, if I remember correctly. Um, I really don't use this one too much because I don't go do very fine very often. I use this one quite a bit. Either way, you use this one first, the flattening one, before you ever touch these. But I'm going to put these over and close these up and put these out of our way. Because all we're using is that flat one. Put that out of the way. To do this, we're going to screw this, or unscrew this. Um, I gotta be careful so it doesn't fall off. Okay, take out the little face plate. In my case, I gotta put this way up here because if not, my three year old will run off with it. He thinks it's funny. Let's put this piece in. I know it's like I'm putting it right up in your face, and I'm sorry for that. I will move it in just a second. Okay, screw the little screw back on. I'm going to turn it this way. This is locked in. Now I'm going to slide this back for a minute because I do need some kitchen counter space. I need to work the dough a little bit and divide it up um, before we do it. So put down a little bit of flour. I'm going to put it all up underneath where the pasta is coming out. 
mainly because sometimes the brush comes out faster and I can catch it. So let's do this. Okay. Um, I'm actually debating at some point putting like spaces and seasoning straight in that pasta dough. Haven't done that yet. I'll put this in the sink. So it's going to curl out for a minute. I'm going to turn you guys down so you can see the dough. So I get water in the base of that because it's going to be um, sitting. Um, I'm going to put a third of a cup of flour into a little container, mainly so that I can sprinkle as I need to and use it on my hands so it don't stick to me. Um, I'm going to have my scraper nearby because I can divide the dough. So I'm going to grab a pinch, rub my hands. I need it just a little bit just to make sure that all that moisture from earlier because I did add that instead of adding that fifth egg I added in the um, almost three-fourths of a cup of water um, so I want to make sure it doesn't end up too wet when it goes through the blade thing right above me here that you can't see in the video right this minute um, okay and there are some great videos out there um, for making dough. I just figured this is going to be a full-on lasagna one. So, you guys, you guys have seen the meat. You have seen um, my inside mixture and how I'm today so far. Now, ugh, ugh. use this thing kind of like a knife. Cut it in half. Um, what I didn't do was grab a container. Or a wet tail. Um, so I'm gonna sit this. I'm gonna put a little flour up here, mainly because I don't want this to stick. Put that there. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of dough right here in front of you, or flour in front of you guys, because it tells you to cut this into fourths. Um, so technically, that's two there, one there, one here. Um, now I don't have a wet one, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cover it with a clean washcloth. Um, I should go fast enough, it shouldn't really hurt it. Um, that it's not like really wet. But I'm gonna kind of roll this up under all the edges, except for the flower I'm dragging. Put this flower back. Um, that way it kind of holds that wash right down. So we have this. This is our first dough ball. Um, you don't want it to be real sticky as you put it through. So make sure when you, you roll it like this or anything else, like I stuck my fingers into it and made it kind of sticky. Um, I don't even want to work with that big of a section because I know how this is I know how I am. So I'm going to divide that in half too. See now I've got that really sticky in, so I'm going to kind of barely pat him and just get a little bit of flour on him. Ooh, as I shoot it everywhere. I'm going to do this. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it however you want. At this point, if you don't have, um, let me push you up so you can see. I'm trying not to cover my mixer. So if you don't have one of these, you can use a roll pin and roll it out. And I'm covered in flour. Never fails. Um, you want to roll one. So rework this. We don't have that wet to make it stick. Sorry, we have some kind of plane or something going over again. Okay, I'm gonna flatten it out. That one end is kind of flat. Okay, starting on a one, not an eight. Don't ask me why I go back. Starting on the one, it will go through. And it gives you that. I do it. It gets kind of sticky. I'm gonna rub it slightly with flour, mainly because I don't like to take the chance of it sticking in my mixer. I don't want to add a lot of flour, but I do want to like de-sticky it some. I don't want to have. I've had stuff go in here, and before I continue on, I had to get it all out, and it really was not even. Um, so there's our second pass on that one. And you can see how it's already getting longer. I'm gonna move it down to a two. Now I don't go through all the numbers. Um, I'm assuming you probably could if you wanted to. I don't. There's the two. And then, ooh, I can get a hold of it. 
I go to a four. Um, I don't like waiting forever. I'm very impatient. Yeah, it's starting to stick. I can see it pulling. Like that. See, it's already really thin. Um, let me turn this off. I think for what I want, I'm going to let it go with this. This is where I'm... Now, you don't... Because I'm doing this um, as lasagna or as raviolis, you don't have to, like, cut it. But I'm going to I can find my cutter. Oh, there it is. It's a roller. If you want straight edge, fluted edge. Um, when you buy lasagna, it's got this fluted edge. So I think it creates that little... Oh, that's the meat sizzling. I hear something sizzling. Um, I'm not as fast as some people are when they do this. I have to watch what I'm doing. Hence me being kind of quiet. Um, as you're seeing this. So, and it's not even. I warn you now. I don't make even strips. Um, this could be used for raviolis or it could be used as lasagna. It doesn't really matter. Um, put that on there. All of these are my scraps. I just rework them into the next ball. Um, you just have to be careful sometimes when you work them in. Um, the dough gets tougher the more and more it runs through here. Um, sometimes I'll set them all aside and only run them through a second time and then whatever's left I just make little strips. I'll be there in a minute buddy. Um, which is probably what I'll start doing after this one because... Okay, so I've already done the rest of the dough of section one. I'm going to show you what really happens. I turned that little off. It's a little darker, sorry. Um, once you get really good at this, you can do this in multiple sets. So we are number two and I'm going to do the rest of it, which is the whole big ball of dough. Right now, step to section part number two. Let's take it. Because we're only running it through number two setting one time. You do this one. Or maybe even smaller segments. Lay it on the counter. Next segment. Ready to catch that one. As soon as that one comes out, I pop in the next one. Hit thunder. These I have to be two handed because I made these kind of big. We've got three more sections to do as number twos, and then we're almost number four. But as you get more used to it, you can do this a lot easier. Two. I did grab a drying rack because my parchment paper filled up pretty quick. Um, so I grabbed my metal drying rack. Um, to use that way it doesn't all like way on the top of each other I don't want them to stick that would be a bad thing okay that's everything done for number two see how fast that was now number four now these I have to do one at a time because of the cutting process but the cutting goes pretty quick one thing that's got left now is my scraps but I haven't done at all so that's number four and actually I can do some of these smaller segments on the number four there's two over here that I'm not going to be able to do the number four until I clear out some space because they're really long. Um, see how long that goes? And I'm halfway done with the number four segments. See how much it gets a lot faster as you get better at it and get more used to it. And when you cut them in smaller segments like this, um, they tend to be a little bit easier to control. Now, that just leaves the other two segments over there. They're going to sit there for a minute. Mainly because I need to be able to do this. You're going to have to wait a minute. i got to get this stuff done. You're going to have to wait a minute.
um, my pieces have gotten bigger, so they are going to hang over my um, drying rack as they cool, but that, oh, as they dry, but that's fine. Um, you're going to have to just be patient then. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like this one over this for me. I need space on my drying rack for the pasta that I just did. Um, so let me do this. You can hang there. Cutting this one here. The goal is because I don't want I do need to put the next rack on top of it. I don't want to like massively. Okay, it's only two. Meant that I thought he was running because somebody on my kids or something was home from my husband. My screen door is locked so nobody could get in. So, now that one's up. Can knock these out faster. Okay, this little piece can go right up inside of here. Goal is I'm trying not to touch them. You can actually buy um, a pasta drying rack. It's usually made of wooden dowels. And it's, the pasta just kind of hangs like this and um, like spaghetti, and then you can break it. Um, I don't like the prices of them. At some point, I might try making one. Um, but I mean, for now, it works. Like for these, it works just fine to use the um, my baking cooling racks. Now, when it comes to spaghetti, that's a whole another story because it is so thin. Um, typically, if I make fresh spaghetti, I, would, I have to go straight from rolling here straight to the pot. Um, but if I do that, I have to have somebody help me because it cooks really, really fast. Because of how fast it cooks, I have to have somebody help me when it comes to that. So. This one I have to lay it this way because it is super long. Yeah. Okay. These not super, super long to be of course too big to go into any pasta pan. Um, I mean, seriously, who could use pasta that big? It would be awesome if I was doing over here but because I don't know what I'm doing, uh, I'm thinking lasagna because they are drying out. They're kind of hard to make raviolis. Best to do those too when they are fresh. Um, so they're still pliable. Um, but I'm thinking a Mexican type lasagna would be nice. And I cut that one on Cricut, but that's okay. Um, I'm not totally, I'm just trying to straighten them up a little bit. I'm not worried about putting like a roughly edge on everything. Um, my goal is to kind of keep them somewhat uniform in size. Like they're not going to be exact because I'm not a machine. Okay, these big long ones are now into two separate pieces for drying. Um, because, quite frankly, I have nowhere to put them that big and have them to dry correctly. As a matter of fact, I'm out of drying racks. I'm out of space here. I'm going to have to put down more parchment paper here and put one here. Um, I am, in fact, hang on one second, I am going to flip these other guys, mainly because they are starting to dry, and if they're going to dry, I would like them to dry somewhat evenly, just in case I don't use them all. Um, what I'm going to do though is anything that's on parchment paper, I'm going to use first, I'm going to save the ones on the rack to use last, but because I did spray it, they came right off, which is awesome. Um... I'm not going to get a super huge piece, sorry, mainly because I don't have a lot left, I just have um, the scraps to go, but I do want to spray this lightly, um, I just have scraps left, so I don't want a super huge piece. Come over my scrap ball, it's still pretty huge, 
so I'm gonna just smush it all. Um, yeah. I had food coloring on my camera that I couldn't get off no matter what I did. I just pulled some off. So I am gonna cut this dough steel, even though it was only a, not that big of a ball. I'm cutting it into four pieces mainly because it'll be easier to work with. Um, and I'll show you guys. I'm gonna run through all of it as four um, balls as one set. So I did just all I did was just smash them down a little bit, turn it on one, two times. Three. One. Anything that doesn't like cut off this time um, will just flat out be left to dry as little pieces of plastic because I'm always chunking little pieces out of the store bought boxes into the edges anyway. Um, I'm not going to ask if worry about it. It's two. Two times three, and that was two pieces. So we're halfway there. One, two, three. So, oh, it ripped a hole in this one. That one's not, it's not going to work like that. I'm going to have to kind of smash that in half to kind of put those holes in. And put it came back through. Unfortunately, because he had the holes and I had to redo it, I have to do it twice. I have to be careful with the holes because if I keep going on the other ones, it always rips on me. And with some of it too, is they are starting to get a little sticky because they were not flowered in any way. Okay. Setting number two. One top. See how big that's getting? Setting number two. One top. Setting number two. Last piece. Setting number two. Okay, I'm about to set four. Then it's gonna stick in here. It's really sticky. Which means he's gonna to stick to my mixer. Mm. Okay. Number four is picked up more food coloring off my camera. I'm have some color spots. That one's ready to go. This one is on number four. I'm making a pasta for dinner later. It's just my local making function. I'm using the pasta machine. Long piece. See, and these all came just from straws. One more to go on number four. Officially done with the pasta roller or cutter maker thing. Um, see, it did pick up some food color and stuff off the counter. Um, if you have something on there that it picks up and you don't want to use it, you can just cut out that little chunk and not use it. With these little scraps, I'm now just going to lay them um, on here. I can either throw them in the pasta pot or I can save them and make um, like once the kids go to school and by myself. Like since it's kind of a big chunk, I'm going to cut him in half. Um, I can save these, boil these little pieces, and I can have me a little pasta thing. This piece. I'm going to take this one that's on here and slide him up, hang him off. So I can put that one on. How cool is that? Okay. Um, maybe the cup. Fortunately, this little piece of parchment paper I don't think was enough, um, mainly because I forgot about how big these things were going to spread out to be. But I'm also taking all the little pieces and cutting them up, so it's not just I'm cutting big pieces that you're hearing. And I'm cutting them into manageable size pieces so that I'm not fighting them later. They don't have to be pretty, you can do straight, you can do curvy, you know, make raviolis, lasagna, regular pasta, um, have fun with it. I'm trying to find all the pieces I've got everywhere. That one on there. Okay, and I think what I might do is I'm totally out of space to put, like, bigger pieces of pasta. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang it up over this. 
Um, cause all it's really going to do, I mean, it's going to, all it's going to do is sit and dry. Um, I just don't want it to stick to the thing. And it's got flour on that from where it was on that. So I'm thinking it'll be okay. Hopefully. Um, if not, I'll tell you later. And we can both have a good laugh over it. Um, right there are all of my little strip pieces going. So I've got pasta here, pasta there, pasta there, pasta here, pasta everywhere. So that is it until we assemble it.